Hello lovelies, if you're in year 12, you are a few weeks into your new course and I bet it's really different from GCSE because, well, I teach it, I see it from the other side, I know it's really different from GCSE. So, and I know it's about this time of year that year 12 starts to freak out a little bit, so I'm just here to tell you it's going to be okay. Everyone's feeling like this, it's going to be okay, and I'm going to go through a few things that are going to make it a bit more okay for you. So in your lessons, I probably don't have to tell you this because you're in your lessons and you've noticed it, the class sizes are smaller, the environment is different. I know that I see the, the shock looks on my year 12 faces, I kind of like run around pretending to be an electron and they're kind of like, she was like this is juicy, so they, and you're right, teaching A level, being an A level student is very different from being a GCSE student. You are expected to be a lot more independent, but there's a lot more fun in the lessons. The lesson sizes are much smaller, so you probably can't sit at the back and hide um, maybe zone out of lesson like you potentially used to do at GCSE and things are moving a lot faster and I imagine at some point you've sat in the lesson or you've sat at home and has a little mini freak out because you don't understand what the teachers have said but they've said it and everyone else appears to be getting on with the questions and you don't get in you don't know what to do don't worry Everybody feels like this at some point. I'm sure you've thought at some point that picking this A-level was a massive mistake because you don't get it. Everybody feels like this at some point and there are lots and lots of things that you can do to make it better. So first of all, the best people to support you in everything is the rest of your class. So I strongly suggest getting a class WhatsApp group set up or a class Discord set up so you can say oh I don't really understand part two of the homework did anybody get it or I missed the lesson can somebody upload the notes from this lesson um obviously not everyone's going to want to be in that WhatsApp group so don't just sign people up make it like a voluntary open thing but helping each other with the work is really useful it's also good when somebody says I didn't get this I'm going to go and ask the teacher about it I'll post what they said later on in the WhatsApp group or in the Discord. These are really useful things to do. Now, going to talk to a teacher is a useful and expected thing. Um, it's very common for teachers to, to have free periods and potentially tell sixth formers, tell early students when those free periods are and have potentially like an open door or an open office policy where you can just go along and say, I'm really stuck with this can you spend a little bit of time going over with me, going over this with me? So ask your teacher when their free periods are and ask them which free period would be the best free period um, to go and ask for help because it's not always going to be every single free period that um, a teacher is prepared to help you because it might be kind of like um, if they've got a really heavy exam period day, then they might use that free period for planning or they might use that free period for marking and they don't necessarily want to be interrupted. But there might be another day where they've got a couple of extra free periods and they are more than happy to be interrupted by A-level students because they are expecting this to happen. So go and ask your teachers when their free periods are, which free period would be best to go and talk to you. The other thing you can ask your teacher to do is post the, the lesson PowerPoints potentially onto your virtual learning environment or share them with you in some other way. So that you can print those out and have them in your folder before the lesson. That way you don't have to rush in the lesson to write down every single thing on the board because you already have it down in front of you. You can then write that up in your independent study, you can run that, write that up as part of your notes, the, the what we're going to be doing, you can add to this with extra examples. But the main thing at GCSE, sorry, the main thing at A level isn't remembering everything your teacher said. It's being able to understand it and apply it and answer questions. So if you can spend more time thinking in the lesson as opposed to frantically trying to copy down everything on the board, this is a really good thing for you to do. Now, lots of lessons are much smaller than uh, previously. Um, and what you might want to set up is a cake rotor. I know, I know, this might be a little bit of a shocker, and it isn't going to work with every single lesson, 
Um, it doesn't always work with chemistry because you've got practicals. It doesn't always work in every single lesson because, you know, period five on a Friday, you do really want to be carrying a cake around for the whole time. But actually setting up a cake rotor is a really lovely thing to do. And it doesn't have to be fancy cakes. It can just be like a packet of chocolate chip cookies that somebody brings in. But it just makes the lesson a little bit nicer. Um, there was, um, it wasn't in one of my lessons, but there was an A-level math lesson once um, in a school that I worked in where the, um, over Christmas they coordinated to bring in a Christmas dinner. Yes, so it was a lesson just after lunch. They all divided up who was going to do which bits, carrots, crackers, stuffing, went home, prepared it, brought it in, and then the lesson after lunch, they prepared a Christmas dinner and brought it in. So there is a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more fun things for you to do in the lessons. Obviously, ask your teacher before you bring in a whole Christmas dinner because that could potentially be quite disruptive to the lesson. But generally, teachers are much more accepting of being a bit more relaxed with six formers, a bit more relaxed with A-level students because you have chosen to be there. You are hopefully um, involved in uh, doing the work and actually wanting to do this as opposed to GCSE where you had to do certain subjects you have chosen to be there for A level um, and because you've chosen to be there for A level homework the attitudes towards homework in my class anyway are always a little bit different um, if you haven't done your homework then you know GCSE it's kind of like well that's the detention and at A level it's kind of like why on earth haven't you done your homework? Why wouldn't you do your homework? Um, and if you explain to the teacher, this happened, this happened, this happened at home, then they might be a bit more understanding. But here the impetus is on you to do the homework, not for the teacher to check that you've done it. You are a lot more responsible for your own education here. And this can be a little bit of a jump because you were only a GCSE student a couple of months ago and where you had lots of people telling you what to do, when to do it, and there were lots of consequences. And now you're a sixth former, you are expected to be a lot more responsible, but nobody's actually taught you how to be a lot more responsible and it's only been a couple of months since you were a GCSE student. And I know lots of people find that a little bit of a shock. Um... So, six form is fun guys, A levels are fun, I know if you're freaking out at the moment and you're finding it really really hard, um, please just try and stick with it if you can, use your independent study periods to write up the notes, look up things after the lesson, um, but if you really do genuinely think you've made a mistake, there is still time to change. So please talk to your teachers about any worries or doubts that you're having, um, because they are genuinely there to help you. And I am going to be here with you every single step of the way. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches. <laughs>